The idea for Mighty Inside was planted about 20 years ago when my grandma told me the story about how she and my grandpa bought their first home in a neighborhood where black people weren't supposed to live. My people migrated from North Carolina to Spokane in the first decade of the 20th century, seeking asylum from violence and oppression, seeking greater opportunity for themselves and their children. I got together with my dad, aunt, and uncles to talk about our family's history in Spokane, including what caused our people to leave the South and head for the Pacific Northwest. We don't know specifically, but it was no place to raise a family, you know, with a bunch of girls. There were, I mean, we, even when you look at the, uh, we did our genealogy and you look at the microfish and what kind of professions? They were laundress, you know, they, they cleaned up, they were laborers, day laborers. Mm -hmm. They come out here and our uncle Grover, he worked at the Great Northern Railroad. Mm -hmm. So that's how he got out. They had lives mm -hmm. with legitimate jobs and ho owned houses down there. They were just... Mm -hmm you know, one step away from sharecroppers. Many black men came out here to help develop the infrastructure. My grandfather's people settled in Peaceful Valley, a tranquil place, but also the part of town most likely to flood if the nearby Spokane River overflowed its banks. My grandparents married in 1941, and the next day moved into the house that my grandpa had found for them, in a housing development on the north side where realtors had agreements not to show homes to black people, and where deeds often included language barring anyone non-white unless they were live-in domestics. So the story goes that my grandpa would go under the cover of night to look for a home. And when he found the home he wanted, he found a white man to pose as the buyer. That man bought the house and then deeded it over to my grandfather who paid him back over time. And I actually have a copy of that deed. Family folklore had the man as being Jewish. On the deed, his name is Armand Caro, so likely Italian. And he was the ally who came alongside my grandparents and helped them to get their home. Unfortunately, as soon as they moved in, some neighbors started a petition to have them removed. Grandma, a faithful member of Bethel AME Church, told me she prayed. Eventually, their opponents backed down and the petition went away. Some of the stories that we heard about the hatefulness of the neighbors that they lived around, um, the petition that was uh, sent around to the neighbors uh, to get us out of the neighborhood, um, the hate letters that were left on the front porch that my mother told me about. And I can't give specific specifics about that because in a way, I think that our parents didn't want to uh, portray the, all of that ugliness, but those were just pieces of the information that kind of seeped out over the years. I knew my grandpa was a proud and self-assured man, but learning that he had defied restrictive covenants and redlining, common practices that kept anyone not white out of certain neighborhoods, revealed another facet of his character. What drove him to circumvent the realtors and banks, to challenge the socially accepted segregation that kept black and white people separate, even here in the Northwest? He, he had a vision for his family yeah. and school and education, I think, was because dad was big about education. I mean, yeah. he didn't get to complete what he wanted mm -hmm. um, education-wise, but he had a vision, and I think in his mind, he felt that the public school system was going to be better in the white part of town. And by hook or by crook, he was going to bring his kids up where they would have better opportunities. What his mantra that he preached to us was he wanted his kids to have it better than he had it. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole thing. And yeah. the, his generation, they all, I think all of them told their kids that he, want, he didn't want, he wanted to make sure that we didn't have the same life as he did. That's kind of what our parents were. Yep. Our parents were quiet revolutionaries yeah. Yeah. in their own way. Even though they lived on the north side of the city, not the east side where the majority of black people lived, my grandparents continued to find their primary social connection with other African Americans who have never made up more than 2% of Spokane's population. The black community in Spokane was committed to maintaining their culture, enriching themselves, and looking out for each other. I wanted to write a novel that would honor my grandparents' courage, 
show this strong Black community in the Pacific Northwest and shed light on the racism that infects every corner of our country, not just the South or urban areas where books about Black people are most often set. In the process, I would learn what it was like for my dad and his siblings to grow up Black in Spokane. In many ways, life was easier for them than it was for their parents' generation, but that didn't mean it was free from racism. And I was probably, we were probably grade school, and that's always vivid with me. Me too. I even pointed out the house when we were, came from Grandma's, where that guy lived. Yeah. But he had the black lab named Nigger. That dog stands out so vividly in my mind because we'd be out in that vac vacant lot playing ball with our neighborhood friends, and I'd see that man coming with his dog, mm -hmm. and I would yep. just hold myself because I didn't want to hear those words because it was mm -hmm. so... I don't know if it was embarrassing or shameful, but it, it that is when I felt the difference mm -hmm. between my, my neighborhood friends. That pushed you down. My dad had an additional challenge, a speech impediment. As I got into high school, it was always like, I didn't want it to limit me, but I knew I was always guarded on talking situations in the classroom or wherever, finding ways to hide it or to get around it. So if I ever had to read, that was difficult. In the 1950s, there was even less support for stuttering as a way of speaking than there is today. But my dad found success in high school sports, student government, and academics. When I started writing this novel, I wasn't planning on having Melvin, my main character, stutter. But over time, it became clear that this would be a part of his story, of him overcoming his fears, finding his voice, and learning to accept himself. I don't know all of what my grandpa had to overcome, but I know he lived life on his own terms. His protest against the racist society he was born into was to be himself. I was the first grandchild and the only one who had the honor of getting to know him. He was already ailing by the time I came along, one of the first at-home kidney dialysis patients in the U.S. His imprint is on almost everything I've ever written. But this novel, in particular, only exists because of him. Grandpa died at the age of 63, his years no doubt cut short by the stresses of having to fight his whole life to be seen as an equal deserving of all the same rights, privileges, and pleasures as anyone else. But Grandma stayed in that home for 50 years. That home that represented so much. Love, sacrifice, commitment, the struggle of Black people to be self-determining, to live freely wherever they want with the inherent dignity of all human people, and the need for allies to come alongside and fight for that vision to become reality. I'm proud of this novel, and I know my grandparents would be too. So I am so proud of being able to present this book to the public, and I'm so grateful to all of you for the role that you've played in supporting me in writing this book. And the dedication for Mighty Inside reads to my dad, Richard William Tucker, for being my number one fan, and for not letting anything stop you from speaking or contributing to your community. And to my aunt and uncles, Kathy, Steve, and Neil, thank you for sharing your memories and taking on the elder's mantle for us. This one is for the four of you. Mm -hmm.